So tools for FPGA development. So my name is uh, Brahim Amadi Sharif. I think everybody knows me. I think. And uh, my colleague friend Joyce. And this is Hackerware 5.0. So I thought I'd give some uh, some small presentation on the, the development tools available for FPGA. And uh, towards the end, I had some few slides about the growing pop popularity of uh, FPGA on all sorts of different uh, domain. So I find this uh, graph on the FPGA market. $22,000? No, no, billion, billion. billion. <laughs> so <laughs> in, <laughs> in the world, there's uh, basically like different vendors of FPGA. Uh, Xilinx is really the, the biggest one. Uh, I will show some slides later. Altera was bought by Intel. And afterwards, so these are the really two biggest uh, FPGA manufacturers. And afterwards, there's a micro semi lattice. Uh, Quick logic is not as uh, as known as the others, but I think it's probably because the, the 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 chip they're making is mainly for maybe communication or specific uh, uh, probably uh, military application or something like that. And then the others is uh, so a total of uh, I think it's four billion. It's basically billion dollars. And the whole thing is uh, usually growing, growing. FPGA is actually uh, more and more popular. Uh, so this is more or less to uh, in, in present more of a, the marketing aspect and the, the value. So <coughs> for those who uh, don't know uh, FPGA development lifecycle, so you have your requirements, design, specification. You write some uh, RTL design. Uh, then you go through synthesis, place and route layout up to the FPGA. And like any other development, you have a lot of feedback going backwards uh, it's quite an iterative process with some simulation logic simulation post post layout simulation and then here is a sort of a graphic that has this v shape the software and the hardware aspect from the verification design implementation and then the other side on the hardware the issue here is that you are developing some software sort of language base that actually map into hardware physical uh, blocks and ultimately gates and, and hardware thing so this is quite a intensive uh, type of cycle of, of development so these are the 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 tools i will give this pdf uh, later available on the on the site or something like that. <coughs> so we have a uh, xilinx so xilinx has uh, ic and vivado um, intel uh, fpga uh, altera has a uh, quartus uh, two others which haven't really used much, but uh, they are quite popular because of the small, quite low cost FPGA now, is the Lattice and the Micro Semi. So the Diamond Suite and Libero. And then two tools which are becoming quite popular because they are uh, open source, free, etc. and have this sort of a open source uh, community behind um, is uh, very Lator and uh, Yosis. Um, so I will go through there's two slides for this. So <coughs> Xilinx has uh, this tool called uh, IAC, Design Suite. So uh, all the way up to the Series 6 and early Series 7 of uh, the FPGA of Xilinx, IAC was the, the tool that is used to basically develop uh, all the FPGA stuff. So you have a, a classic uh, tree of your project with different, uh, for example, X2, etc. over there. Maybe I need the, uh, yeah, I don't know. You have a laser? Maybe not. Uh, basically, you can select which FPGA you want. And then afterwards, you have the different process that you can basically uh, specify. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so you have the FPGA, FPGA here. Uh, you have the code, so... Uh, can, can, can someone recognize this code? What, what sort of language is it? Okay, you get a free t-shirt. Uh, so beginning, you have a, this... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm great! <laughs> and then you, you, know, you specify, let's say, a process beginning, waiting for, and then you wait, you have specific thing, and the whole loop, the whole block here. Um, and then you have some signals, Y, which is just a one bit. Um, and then you have uh, all the debug here. You can specify things, and then you have uh, tons and tons of, uh, of, of, of aspect that you can. It's more or less like a, like a Visual C++ edit. I mean IDE. Uh, <coughs> and in the case of uh, IEC, here you have the implementation, and you also have the, the simulation part. So you implement, you test how things run, and afterwards 
you have to do a test bench when you basically specify the oh my god. <laughs> 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 So um, you end up with an error if you you know you're very good you don't actually get this one. Warnings usually uh, TCL this is the shell to run and then finding in files. So this is the the, the sort of oh, okay okay you have to press properly. Yeah, press. Okay okay. <laughs> Okay, so if you want to try, you can uh, download this uh, webpack. You register to Xilinx, uh, and you can you can get the, the webpack. Has uh, uh, Xilinx evolved in their in their PGA technology? The okay, so I can I, I can show here. There's also a chip chip scope to actually uh, like uh, verify signals, etc. And you have all sorts of uh, of uh, sort of um, not plug-in, but more like like part of the tools. Uh, the macro blaze being this small risk processor that you can instantiate to actually run stuff. Uh, the simulator, embedded IPs. Uh, next. And then when you actually move to uh, Series 7 or Zinc, which have an ARM core, you're using uh, Vivado. So this is the, the most recent tool. So they've rearranged things a little bit uh, with uh, this one, the RTLIS, the synthesis implementation. And then you can actually also uh, uh, have like a tree with all the different signals that you can have uh, and then really FPGA is about uh, designing your blocks synchronizing things try to maximize the bandwidth of the different blocks and then at the end make sure that you know things clock at the right position and and try to uh, to get the maximum of, of your of your resources really um, you have a lot of IP integrator here that you can also get stuff uh, from Xilinx then you have your test bench uh, in Verilog here uh, it, the the analysis uh, RTL has this nice rendering. Once you actually have your code, it can draw all these nice uh, blocks and things connected. So I would recommend you to try to use Vivado, uh, the 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 most recent uh, Series Seven, uh, Spartan Seven, and also Zinc are quite cheap. They're like a hundred dollar or two hundred dollars. So this becomes hundred dollar is quite okay. It's like a Raspberry Pi type right. of thing <laughs> uh, okay. and okay so you, you you can have the it's still free you can still have the free version and the resources are limited yeah. but usually when you buy a more expensive board you get a license that actually you know allow you to generate yeah. a bit um, uh, that one there is the, the uh, a free version or standard version free this version. one yeah. this one is the normal version yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no difference between uh, the only uh, difference is when you select in the project when you select which FPGA IP you, you yeah or the IP blocks you will you will have uh, yeah. <coughs> the the idea is that actually if you buy a very expensive FPGA you will have a key that allow you to actually generate the bitstream for that card so actually you're not uh, uh, so this is the Vivado uh, and HLS there's also high level synthesis meaning that you can write C code that actually will be converted in VHDL or Verilog. That will be so. It could also be uh, easy for you to write stuff in C. However, don't expect you know your massive uh, C code to be uh, converted properly. Uh, it tends to be filters, FFT, or like function like this. Okay. Yeah. So if if you really uh, have some area at the beginning when things are not uh, uh, not uh, like initialized, turns out in gray, in, sorry, in red, and at some point if uh, the signal is actually undefined of this com conflict, it will show it on the on the <coughs> sorry on the graph and within the the code you can also have some sort of printf or create files that you can uh, create a log so usually you develop something you have some test vectors that you fit into your block you have the results and then you can use all the tools outside to script uh, okay good question okay in some of the vivado you can also uh, look at where uh, vivado uh, put the different um, sorry uh, element and also calculate the path uh, with a certain uh, delay because down the line the shortest path is what you want to minimize so that you have uh, the maximum speed for all your, your circuits so you can really go down to the the very uh, lower level specifying which pin goes where etc etc next as you may know uh, Intel bought Altera 
for 16.7 billion dollar in 2015 so this is a big move of intel buying the number two in uh, fpga world and now everything is called intel fpga so ma mainly focused on uh, uh, iot and and also data center basically that's the the move so so then i will leave, let my colleague to continue on this part okay. Okay, uh, the <coughs> Intel's version of their uh, design simula and simulation tool is basically the quarters design suite, as you can see here, and pretty much is qu is quite similar to uh, I, uh, in my opinion, it's quite it's quite similar to uh, uh, Xilinx ISE and all that. So you basically write your code and can do things like your uh, your simulation. So you can so you can see all of, uh, you can see the waveform simulation of uh, of your module and all that and you can do and in quarters of, of pretty similar to Vivado or ISC you can do things like your, your chip layout your, your simulation and, and things like that so so yeah it's, pre it's pretty similar most of anyway most of these tools like uh, for Lattice Diamond for their ICE 40 FPGAs and things like that yeah, and even micro uh, semis liberal it's, it's just pretty much the same thing what you're just doing is that you're just put you're just designing your your uh, you just come up with your design according to your requirements and then you synthesize uh, plan layout and then test everything and then make and you verify that everything uh, works well both in the uh, both when you synthesize your Verilog or VHDL code and if you're using a FPGA with a actual hard core processor you verify that the software also works so so yeah generally that's the, the that's the uh, the design style but it's pretty similar for most of the tools anyway this tool which i have personally used very later well what what it does is that you when you write your ver your very log code you can take your very log mo uh, code and when you write a test bench in c++ you can spit out a file in which you can use gtk gtk wave to actually show the to get the simulation data and, and all that and it's free and it, for for everyone to download it, but it does need a bit of setup and uh, configuration to get it working. And of course, there's things like uh, use this open synthesis suite, which I'm not like uh, I'm not personally use it, so I can't uh, I, uh, I can't really talk about it. Uh, yeah. And I guess I have to hand back to Ryan. So for your synthesis, really that uh, they, they really want to have these sort of free tools that remove the tool from the commercial vendor. So if you, you go back, you go back by one. So, yeah. so they're really trying to map, for example, they have this uh, mapping of Series 6. So they are trying to generate all sorts of, uh, of bitstream from examples. And afterwards, reverse engineering the format of the bitstream to be able to generate themselves, I mean, they have the, the tool. <coughs> the person who's uh, uh, in charge of this is called uh, Clifford, uh, John Clifford, I think. And he's very active in uh, open source and, and, and that type of thing. So next. So uh, FPGA is becoming more and more popular. So the first thing is that uh, uh, it's used to, really to uh, prototype ASIC. And then there's actually a few uh, topics which are becoming very, very uh, much popular. RISC-V, deep learning, even cryptocurrency mining these days, and uh, Internet of Things, which is more like the low power aspect. So ASIC uh, prototyping, uh, it's really more like the same verification than the synthesis. Physical layout of the ASIC, we really look at the gate level where the FPGA, we have actually have blocks. So the FPGA have already some blocks, but down the line, you usually use uh, the FPGA development to prototype for ultimately making the ASIC. <coughs> An ASIC will actually use less power and also get clocked faster than the FPGA. So usually it's the preparation for, for that. Next. Uh, so some of the uh, interesting uh, development is this uh, RISC-V uh, and one of these guy called Jay Gray has this uh, massively parallel uh, risk accelerator when he actually can pack uh, 1,680 risks 5 into one massive FPGA. Uh, and down the line, it, it, it's basically uh, small little routers that make a mesh uh, or some sort of network. And then each of, oops, each of the, of the, of the box, <laughs> as you can see, some, uh, some memory 
and then the thing. Take a time, there's no. Yeah, no. And then, then. Uh, so you have, you know, you have this sort of a, of a switch, and then you have. Uh, we believe those buses is really to move packets of data into those little uh, part. Uh, it's called like a processing element, and each of them can have some memory processing and then some switches. It's about splitting the big algorithm into small uh, uh, processing element and basically maximize the, the whole thing, which is more or less what is done in a GPU when you have like thousands of small core which do things in parallel. However, this one you can program which instruction you want, et cetera, et cetera. So there's this ability to have a, a very customized uh, processing unit. <coughs> and this is actually the, some of the, the example, uh, the code is provided so you can also uh, basically try yourself a lot of those development. Um, and then if you are really top of the range, you uh, get from uh, Amazon uh, AWS an F1 uh, 16. So, you have a PC switch, you, you have access to these uh, two uh, Xeon, and then you end up with uh, eight uh, massive FPGA boards. So those people who are using this, they tend to have this uh, massive uh, AI algorithm or video processing, and then they use AWS to, to pump data uh, through some internet somewhere. And basically here you, you have really a massive, massive uh, uh, system that, that, that basically can implement what you want. So you. Uh, it looks okay like this, but you still have to, you know, connect things together, etc. So it's not it's not uh, straight straightforward. But this is sort of the the top of the range, and the guy is called uh, yeah Gray. Uh. <coughs> so this table, uh, this is actually from a GitHub. Uh, so you have uh, a lot of uh, repositories uh, from different. So uh, sci five is really uh, one of the like newer company uh, who's designing those uh, uh, RISC V as a chip. So you have the sort of Arduino size or Raspberry size uh, small board. And then you have uh, Zurich University. So you have um, um, RISC V with a different uh, like 32 bit, 64 bit. Uh, some of them have compression, some of them are integers, some of them are float, some of them have uh, all sorts of, of add on. Uh, and a lot of them, you can actually really get the source code, dig, learn modify, compile, and try to see how it works into, uh, into your... So this one, for example, the Pico VR, this is quite, quite a... So Clifford Wolf, that's the guy who's doing the Yosis. Um, next. So deep learning, uh, I'm sure you've seen uh, this now, is that there's a lot of uh, FPGA-based uh, cars which are accelerating a lot of the AI uh, push now. So as much as there's a push from a GPU side with NVDA or AMD having those uh, GPU accelerating AI, uh, Xilinx and a lot of uh, Intel, I think this one is uh, Altera, uh, Altera based, uh, are also developing those cards to actually implement some of these deep learning. One of the advantage of the, those cards is that you can also have uh, some communication uh, like 100 gigabits uh, Ethernet. So if you have your GPU uh, uh, card, you also have the limitation of the PCI, but you cannot feed uh, Ethernet data. Where here, if you're doing financial uh, you know, training, whatever, the data feed can actually come directly to the core of your thing. <coughs> and down the line, you always like, they always compare like teraflop, the number of, of a logic element, and then you have a DDR4, and an HBM, all sorts of innovative memory and technology. That uh, so Bitware is. One of the interesting, uh, and this is Intel FPGA. And next, um, because I'm a Xilinx fan, uh, <laughs> Xilinx uh, basically unveils some uh, architecture really for AI inference. So you really get with you really get um, a, a proper proper chip with a huge amount of DSP uh, capabilities, huge amount of uh, of RAM on board, and plus four DDR4. Um, Basically, there's uh, four uh, uh, like memory slots, uh, and they're really comparable to some of the um, uh, NVDA V100, P100 uh, type of cards. However, they consume quite less, um, so there is a sort of balance uh, between having a GPU, which is more generic. The idea that will be uh, passed at some point where 
people learning GPU coding will be uh, sort of will plateau in a sense from a performance point of view. Uh, but those uh, FPGA, you still have to learn the tools to actually implement some of the stuff. So there will be a plateau where some of the tools will be able to synthesize automatically some of the blocks that are used in the GPU. Uh, next. Uh, funny enough, the, the crypto mining, which used to be on those little uh, Spartan 3 uh, little babies, becomes racks of uh, basically uh, Xilinx cards. Uh, I'm not uh, sponsoring any of this. I think the return of investment is always very low now, I think, wh whichever you take GPU or, or but you will see people, um, you know, creating those rigs now. Um, the whole issue is that the bit stream that m must be running here uh, is not open source. So actually, people will try to make you buy the card and also uh, get you the the, the bit stream for, for this. So this is something that <coughs> ultimately there's a sort of a shift, slight shift uh, that the GPU um, can be replaced by FPGA, especially for some cryptocurrency which are uh, hitting the sort of me uh, the CPU, the, sorry, the, yeah, the sort of arithmetic part and where the memory is an issue. And the memory aspect in, a, in FPGA can be actually programmed so that this can be pushed uh, higher. Uh, so it's called the memory wall in a sense. It's like you get to a point where the, the maximum bandwidth of the system is actually is the limitation of, of your processing. And then the last one is the IoT. Uh, everybody talking about IoT, uh, it's coming, it's coming. Uh, some of the, uh, this is just a paper from Archipoli. Uh The issue is that you can really have some very, very ultra low FPGA um, IoT cores. Um, and ultimately they run on usually the sort of some, uh, micro, micro semi uh, <coughs> igloo FPGA. Uh, so we will see more and more uh, M3, small co Cortex M3 or M0, M1, etc., which will be implemented in FPGA, uh, which becomes a small prototype for small chips for IoT. Um, and you have to you have to realize that the, the FPGA uh, has this possibility that you can instantiate some I2C, some SPI interface, so you can actually really model, um, modularize your design in the way that you want. Um, having multiple camera or having different type of, 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 of input. Um, uh, so this is a lot of uh, microelectronics uh, conference are, are more and more um, uh, basically publishing uh, those. And there's a lot of uh, uh, aspect about the power techniques to actually uh, reduce the power on, on those uh, things. The university in um, EFT, um, Zurich have, a, I think it's called PULP, it's very low power, RIGS-5 also, so you have a lot of technology that has been uh, developed like this. Um, in terms of people trying FPGA, the tools are usually a couple of gigs. The machine to be run, usually you have a 4 gig or 8 gig machine. Um, none of the tools, apart from the open source one, really explore multi-core. So it doesn't matter if you have an existing core. Uh, Vivado, I think, has a limit of 4 core, so you cannot really run uh, you know, like 100 cores on, on those tools. However, memory tends to be the sort of limitation on the thing. Okay, thank you very much. And. Uh,